to acting deputy president. And you know what I really like about nuclear power is that when you turn it on, it works. When you turn it on, it works and it's dispatchable. Now compare that to wind power, who in the last quarter produced the same amount of energy as it did three years ago, despite the fact that an extra 2,400 gigawatts of capacity has been installed into the system. Now that extra 2,400 gigawatts of capacity cost billions of dollars to install. And what did we get for that money? Nothing. Nada. Zip. And that is the problem with unreliables, is that you don't know if it's going to turn up for work that day. And you cannot run a country hoping and praying that the wind's going to blow or the sun's going to shine. Now, when that side of the chamber accuses this side of being Luddites because we don't believe in technology, nothing could be further from the truth. I do believe in technology, but I happen to know that if you want to unlock the energy of a molecule, you've got to go up into the high uh, atomic numbers. That's where the real energy is. If you go and look at the probes that NASA sends out to Mars, they're using plutonium batteries that last for years and will send you a send a vehicle out into outer space. Now, imagine the day when we can tap into nuclear power in such a way that we can have batteries in our cars or our semi-trailers that you don't have to recharge for years. For years. Now, we may be a long way away from that today, but that is the technology of tomorrow. And that is why we desperately need nuclear technology in this country, because we cannot continue to rely on unreliables. We cannot continue to sink billions of dollars into an energy grid and get nothing for it. And should I mention the word snowy hydro? Should I mention the word green hydrogen. I mean, you want to criticise us about a pipe dream of building nuclear power plants when there's over 400 uh, already installed in the world, another 60 being built and another 110 slated to be built by over 30 countries, including the biggest countries in the world like the USA, France and China. No, 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 no. You criticise us for that, but you've got your own pipe dreams and some of this green hydrogen stuff that has never worked, that has never worked. And the idea that you can somehow export this energy overseas is just a pipe dream. But the other thing we need to talk about is waste. Because when we uh, question the CSIRO about their costs in terms of building renewables, and I did just that yesterday morning, they couldn't tell me what the capacity factor of a wind farm was. And of course, the capacity factor that they use in their assumptions is 50 per cent. The real capacity factor over the last five years is 30 per cent. The highest capacity factor of any energy source, as stated by the uh, Energy Commission in the USA, is actually nuclear energy. And that's on a par with coal. But the CSIRO assume the capacity of those energy sources are only 60 per cent. Why? because they always give first dibs to the unreliables, particularly solar, in the middle of the day. Right? Now, what happens, and this is where people say when they say, oh, energy, you know, renewables are cheaper, it may be correct that in the middle of the day it is cheaper to sell solar, because you have to unload 32 terawatts of solar in order to meet the national energy target, renewable energy target that was set up years ago. So energy companies sell this stuff at a loss throughout the middle of the day, and then the, the zealots will take that and say, look how cheap it is. But then those losses made through the middle of the day are then recouped at night time by coal, when coal is running. And so what you're doing is you're actually increasing the costs of energy all around, basically to subsidise renewables in the middle of the day. And the other beautiful thing about nuclear power is you won't have 100 kilometres of transmission lines. You won't have all that toxic sludge from renewable, uh, sorry, from batteries, lithium batteries, and all the neobadium that goes into that, and all the copper and the nickel and everything like that. Not that there's enough rare metals in the earth to actually build this stuff, 
So let's get back to reality. Let's look forward to the future and embrace new growth. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.